Hello students, welcome to lecture 22 of the online course on Photonic Crystals, Fundamentals and Applications. This lecture will be on overview of Photonic Crystal Slabs. So here is the lecture outline, we will have a brief introduction, discuss about the rod and hole slabs and then we will introduce you to a new topic which is topological photonic crystals and how do you do modeling of this photonic crystal slabs. So, Simple structures we have seen already with one dimensional periodicity that can be used to confine light in three dimensions and that uses both photonic band gap feature as well as index guiding in the other two orthogonal direction. So if you remember as we discussed earlier also that this is an example of three different examples of periodic dielectric waveguides. So, these are the x, y and the z dimension directions marked here. So, you can see that each of these structure has one dimensional periodicity in x and uh, they are basically supported by index guiding in the other two transverse direction. Now, let us carry that idea one step further by investigating structures with two dimensional periodicity but with a finite thickness. So, this kind of hybrid structures are known as photonic crystal slabs or you can also call them planar photonic crystals. So, that is where our discussion on rod and hole slabs begin. Okay? So, these are not you know perfectly two dimensional periodic crystals despite their resemblance. If you remember from the definition of the two dimensional photonic crystals, the third dimension should be continuous, but here it is not because they have a finite width. Okay? So, this finite thickness that you can see in the vertical or z dimension, if you consider the lateral dimensions to be x and y. Okay? So, this finiteness in z dimension introduces uh, qualitatively new behavior. Right? Just as the periodic uh, dielectric waveguides which you have seen in the previous uh, section okay, or previous lecture you can see, they basically differed from photonic crystals in uh, one dimension. So, let us begin our discussion with uh, rod and hole slabs. So, they are also called uh, photonic crystal slabs or planar photonic crystals. And as, I, as we discussed before that they are not two dimensional photonic crystals despite their resemblance. In the case of a um, two dimensional photonic crystal, uh, this whole uh, cylindrical holes would have been infinitely long, but that is not the case, right. So, these are basically, a, this shows a basically hole slab which is actually a triangular lattice of air holes in a dielectric slab, but it has got the finite thickness. Now, because of this finite thickness in the vertical or z direction, so if you consider the thickness x is to be z, okay, that introduces a quali uh, qualitatively new behavior. Okay? And this is very similar to the case where we have discussed uh, the periodic dielectric waveguides. Okay? And they, they also differ from one dimensional photonic crystals because of their finite height or thickness. Now, as in the three dimensionally um, periodic crystals, defects in uh, periodic crystal slabs can be used to form waveguides and cavities. So, that we will discuss later, maybe in the next lecture, but here we will be mainly analyzing about some new features. Okay? So, with such building blocks, many interesting devices have already been experimentally realized by using standard uh, lithographic techniques uh, based on two dimensional patterns. This ease of fabrication comes at a price uh, that is careful designing is required to minimize the loss at the cavities and uh, similar breaks in the periodicity. So, let us take up this hole and slab arrays in more details. So, here are the two examples of photonic crystal slabs. Okay? So, 
once again like uh, they have uh, uh, two dimensional periodicity so there is 2d band gap along x and y and uh, in the vertical or z dimension uh, there is a finite thickness and their index guiding is helping you to keep the uh, light confined within the slab itself so this is basically a rod slab which is nothing but you know you can think of an array of dielectric cylinders and this is the inverted array not exactly inverted array because this is a square lattice and this is a triangular lattice so this is you can just think of an whole a slab or whole array so here the holes air holes are making uh, triangular lattice okay so as mentioned here so what are the dimensions typically taken so in this case the case of uh, rod slab you consider the rods to have radius r equals 0.2 a and uh, for the case of slab the thickness is 2 a what is a a is the lattice period okay so in this particular example um, the thickness is 2 a that is good so what about the radius of the holes the radius of the holes taken to be r equals 0.45 a and in the case of the slab okay the radius was 0.2 a as i mentioned okay okay so in in the so we need to um, record this again so in the in the whole slab example or no sorry in the rod slab example for this one okay the rods are having radius r equals 0.2 a and the overall slab has a thickness of 2 a okay and if you go to this whole slab example here the holes have a radius r equals uh, 0.45 a and the slab has got a thickness of 0.6 a okay so in this slide we are basically showing you the band diagrams of this 2d photonic crystal slabs um, which are suspended in air so so these are basically the 2d one so we have not considered the z at all here okay so these are just 2d structures or 2d simulations so this is the rod slab and this is the whole slab so z is not uh, considered here okay so with discrete translational symmetry in uh, two dimensions or two directions you can say that the in plane wave vector which is given by k parallel which can also be written as kx and ky these two components is basically conserved but the vertical um, wave vector kz is not conserved okay so that is the case when you have finite you know thickness of the slabs now before you go to that kind of structure what is the actual scenario we can start our discussion with a very simplified version where you consider them as simple uh, 2d lattices okay the z dimension does not exist fine so it will be useful to plot the projected band diagram uh, which in this case is the plot of k versus omega versus k parallel in the irreducible brillouin zone of the two dimensional lattice which are shown here okay so this is for the rod slab and this is for the whole slab now as in two dimension one is able to decompose the guided modes into two non-interacting classes the lack of uh, translational symmetry in the vertical dimension however you know means that these states are not purely t and tm so in the previous case you could see that you know you are able to get a tm band gap okay um, in two dimension okay uh, for this kind of uh, rod slab and you are able to get t band gap in two dimension okay uh, when you have this kind of whole slab but you know when you consider the third dimension that is a finite uh, thickness uh, of the rods or the whole slab that is where things become critical okay here the lack of translational symmetry in the vertical direction means that the states will not be purely te or tm polarized okay 
instead due to the presence of you know horizontal symmetry plane bisecting the slabs the guided modes can be um, classified according to whether they are you know even or odd with respect to reflections through this plane and uh, they they can be actually um, indicated by you know odd or even modes okay and you can see here the the field circles are showing odd modes and the open circles are showing even modes and this has been done for both the cases right so here you can see the band diagrams which are actually for the three dimensional structure okay so these are 2d uh, photonic crystals which have got some finite uh, thickness right so there you, you can also clearly see that this uh, band diagrams are different from those that you have seen in the previous slide but here you can observe that you can see band gap in odd modes okay however here you can also for this case you can actually see band gap for even modes okay so what are these shaded areas this shaded area is basically the light cone uh, so all of the extended modes propagating an air actually reside here so below this these are all guided bands okay localized to the slab so they are t tm like modes okay but here you are actually calling them um, odd or even so that is with respect to z equals 0 mirror plane so with that if you see the field distribution from that you have to decide whether it's a even mode or odd mode okay so more or less you can understand that this odd even kind of modes also behave like tetm kind of you know modes but these are more accurate in this particular perspective of uh, 2d slabs because they are the three dimensional structures means they are 2d slab with some uh, practical or finite thickness right so the extended modes propagating in air they basically form a light cone for omega greater than equal to c k or you can say c k parallel so this particular slope that basically corresponds to uh, uh, this equal sign and then there are some regions which are also extended so that uh, these are the extended modes okay and below this light cone um, you can actually see that the higher um, dielectric uh, constant of the slab has pulled down the discrete guided bands so eigenstates in these bands will decay exponentially in the vertical direction that is away from the slab and um, you will get to see how the modes decay in actual simulation which we'll be discussing towards the end part of this lecture so the system here is basically invariant um, under reflections through z equals zero plane and thus it allows us to classify the modes as t like which we can also call as even or you can think of uh, tm like modes which are basically named as odd modes in this case okay so we will actually uh, discuss about the optimization of these parameters later on so now we'll move on to the uh, next interesting topic which is topological photonic crystals now this is an exciting uh, area of research which has been in the news of scientific community since past few years okay so the area is called topological photonics now this topological photonics as i mentioned is an integrating research area that has emerged from the rich interplay between condensed matter physics and optics so what happens in this particular field it investigates the properties of light in a very specially designed photonic material that basically mimics the topological characteristics of electronic materials mainly the topological insulators okay so the fundamental interest in topological photonics basically lies in its ability to guide light in robust ways that are immune to defects and disorders 
So, just like the edge modes that you can see in topological insulators that conduct electrons without dissipation means without scattering losses here also you will be able to use topological photonic insulators for making different uh, wave guiding structures where light can be guided without any loss. So, that is something very very interesting. This uh, robust propagation is governed by the photonic band structures topological properties okay, often characterized by the non-trivial topological invariants. We will go into the details. So, we understood we learned a new term here topological insulator topological photonic crystals. Now, they all originated in the condensed matter physics in long you know long back. So, the topological order has begun with the integer quantum Hall effect that searched with topological phases in graphene and finally, they were experimentally realized in 2D topological uh, insulators in 2007. So, it is not very very old as uh, you could possibly think of. The photonic crystal concept is very old, but not this you know topological photonic crystals, they are very new and hot topic of research. So, photonic analogs of quantum Hall states, so you can think of okay, what people have done. So, in 2008, Helden and Raghu proposed the concept of unidirectional uh, electromagnetic states in non-reciprocal magnetic photonic crystals, which are similar to you know quantum Hall states. So, this idea was experimentally demonstrated in the microwave frequency range in uh, 2009. What followed was the development of photonic topological insulators right. So, proposals emerged for photonic analog of the quantum ho spin Hall states okay, and that has led to the concept of photonic topological insulators. So, research expanded beyond structured material to continuous media where topological electromagnetic states are theorized and numerically demonstrated okay, such as topological Langmuir cyclotron waves in magnetized plasmas. So, these are all you know difficult concepts to understand, but let me bring the first notion of topology in this lecture. So, what do you mean by you know topological insulators and what is topological invariance? Okay? So, when you think of the word topology, this basically refers to a branch of maths or mathematics that studies properties of spaces that are preserved under continuous deformations such as stretching and bending, but not tearing or gluing that is important. Okay? So, it is concerned with the core essence of shapes in terms of their spatial properties and relationships, ignoring more rigid aspects like distance and angle which are studied in geometry. So, one classic example involving you know topology is comparing a donut with a coffee mug as you can see here. So, at the first glance if you think of the two objects okay, um, they, uh, they look like very different. So, one is a very delicious treat with a hole in the middle that is donut and the other one is a container for you know um, liquid typically coffee and it has got a handle. Now, if you think it from the topological perspective you can see that you know they are basically equivalent. How? because one can be transformed into another shape through a series of deformation without cutting or tearing the material as it is shown here in the animation. Okay? So, you can think of these two of the same type, these two of the same type, g equals 0, g equals 1 tells you about the number of holes present. Okay? So, 0 holes, 1 hole, 2 hole, 3 holes and so on. Okay? So, this is how if you want to visualize what is happening here, these are the step by step transformation that might help you to visualize that. Okay? So, imagine the donut which is basically this structure, it is a solid torus with a central hole. Now, deform the donut. Okay? So, you begin by slowly enlarging the hole in the center 
while thinning the remaining material of the donut and then you shape the handle so as the hole enlarges and the material becomes thin okay extend part of the dough to form a handle like structure and turn the you know rest into the cup's body so the remaining dough can then be you know turned into uh, the cup and that is how you can actually complete the transformation from a donut to a mug so what is important here the transformation shows that the both objects have a single hole and which is the key topological feature here so topologist would say that both donut and cup have a uh, genus of genus of one that means it refers to uh, number of holes in the object so therefore in topology the essence of an object is defined more by the features than by their you know specific details of its shape right so that is what topology now let us go to why you know we we how do you get you know the idea of topological insulators what are these okay so the first thing is the motion of electrons in a material in response to magnetic field is a you know so say you have a magnetic field that is going coming out of the screen okay so the response of the electrons in a material in response to this kind of a magnetic field is basically a fundamental aspect of the condensed matter physics and uh, it plays a critical role in various topological phenomena such as quantum hall effect right so we all all have understood the quantum hall effect in our you know btech or school days okay the fundamental of it so here is how the motion occurs and leads to this unique boundary dependent behavior so this is what we'll be discussing here so when the electrons in a material are subjected to a magnetic field which is perpendicular to their motion they basically experience the lorentz force so this is how they are forced to follow this circular path so the, what happens the the force acts perpendicular to both electrons velocity and the magnetic field causing the electrons to deviate from straight line trajectories and instead follow these circular paths okay now this is known as cyclotron motion now the radius of the circular motion which is also known as cyclotron radius depends on the electron speed the strength of the magnetic field and the electron's effective mass fine now what happens to the electrons at the boundaries now, at the boundary of the material the behavior of the electrons change significantly because their path is confined okay so when the electron moving in the cyclotron orbit reaches a boundary it cannot continue their motion outside the material because there is no material here rather it reflect back and it continues like this okay so that is how you know this reflection basically alters their path from a you know circular trajectory to a helical trajectory that is along the edge of the material now this helical paths at the boundary lead to what are known as the edge states and these edge states are crucial for understanding of the topological phenomena phenomena in materials so this is where the energy band representation of topological material looks like so this is the conduction band this valence band the minimum of conduction band and the maximum of valence band the difference between these two gives you uh, gap okay there is a band gap and this is where the edge state you know will lie we'll come to that okay in more details so what do we understood we understood the topological phenomena and the edge states like let's go into further details of this interesting concept so in the quantum hall effect when a strong magnetic field is applied the bulk of material including insulating becomes insulating while you know the edges remain conductive so what happens the bulk of the material is an insulator 
but the edges are conducting so this con conductivity is due to the edge state uh, where the electrons travel without back scattering that is there is no reflection even if there is a presence of disorder or impurity now this is the beauty of this one even if there is a disorder or impurity the electrons are followed to go forward only okay and this is how you know the edge states are protected by the topology of the materials band structure and the external magnetic field and le they leads to the quantized hall conductance which is a hallmark of the topological order so using these concepts you can think of topological insulator so similar to the quantum hall effect but here without an external magnetic field okay you can see that the topological insulators can exhibit edge states which are protected by the time reversal symmetry so here electrons on the surface or edges can move in helical manner where electrons with opposite spins will move in opposite direction so this spin momentum locking is another example of topological phenomena arising from the boundary conditions so when a particle moves under the influence of um, perpendicular magnetic field it moves in orbits or circles okay so in a material with lot of particles moving um, we have something like the following okay so classically the particles moving in orbit translate to what are called the localized states okay if you use the language of quantum mechanics because they are localized around certain you know points now at the edges of the material you can see that the particles try to deform the closed orbits but they are stopped at the boundary where they hit and they are basically sent back to the next orbit okay so this incomplete orbits at the edges they look like this right so as you can see hitting on the edge and moving on to the next orbit causes the particles to move forward along the edge of the uh, material so quantum mechanically this corresponds to extended states meaning that they are not the localized ones okay hence these particles move along the you know edges but at each edge so here the particles move like this on the other edge they actually move in the opposite direction so this is how you know the band diagram will also look like so this for the normal normal case of insulating uh, material okay so here you see there is a band gap okay and uh, this is where they, they these are the center points okay of the axis so if you can also see the quantum hall effect giving rise to the edge states which are marked here okay and uh, you can also see that for spin up you can consider this as the direction of propagation for which this is the edge state okay the red color shows you that and if you go for the spin down then this is the direction of propagation and this will be your uh, edge state in the energy band diagram right so with that basic understanding we can uh, look for different applications of topological photonic crystals so as i discussed this, these crystals also are immune to backscattering or any uh, you know uh, scattering losses because of impurity and defect so you can actually guide light through this kind of topological photonic crystals uh, through any sharp uh, geometries or banding so here some applications are there so let us uh, quickly discuss those so here one application um, that you can see is basically a waveguide channel that has been designed and uh, this is the simulation so you can see the zigzag part path that has been followed so the the path has got very sharp bands but then because of these edge states uh, they, they are able to propagate without any loss so how do you actually uh, get this 
so you can actually make uh, this kind of uh, topological photonic crystals where the unit cell the two different sides sets of unit cell can actually give you the domain wall and this is how you create the red mark one shows you the domain wall which is actually shown here so this tells you the experimental uh, result of measure experimental setup for measuring the transmission so you have um, a millimeter wave generator then a multiplier to give that signal to you these are the hollow wave guides and this is your valley photonic crystal uh, or the topological photonic crystal that you have made okay and then this is the final transmission graph that you see so what is important here to notice that if there is no domain wall the transmission drops significantly because of the scattering losses in this very sharp uh, case but in the case of straight and the twisted okay both shows similar kind of uh, um, performance so that is where you know photonic crystal is very useful uh, topological photonic crystals are very useful for making this high channel web guides so this is the basic uh, unit cell okay and this is how the edge state will look like this is the band diagram opening okay so what you can actually see here that if you take them symmetrical okay you will have this uh, dotted lines which are kind of you know closing in so there is no band gap but as you uh, make one triangle different to the other okay in size you'll be able to bring in uh, asymmetry and that will open up the band gap so this is an experimental demonstration of uh, transmitting uncompressed 4k high definition data so using this webcast channel uh, a transmission rate of 11 gbps was was achieved okay and what is the frequency range for this kind of webcast channel the people are designing this uh, for 320 to 350 gigahertz uh, where a 30 gigahertz channel is basically created okay so here is a bit of details about um, the uh, valley photonic crystals so valley photonic crystals in topological photonics basically employ the concept of valleys from uh, solid state physics these are the regions in the momentum space characterized by local energy minima so that is why they are called valley so these are basically like this you know and um, they are akin to the uh, electronic uh, valleys in materials like uh, graphene so these structures manipulate light using the valley degree of freedom uh, resulting in distinctive photonic band diagram like this okay so you can actually uh, so this is a symmetrical uh, structure with symmetrical ho symmetrical holes structure so you can actually make a delta equal greater than zero this is a type 8 where the bottom uh, triangle is larger than the uh, top one or you can make the other one and when these two different unit cells are placed side by side it can create this uh, domain wall so you will see that you know the line defect you can actually make uh, any kind of domain wall forming any shape and that will be the wave guide that you are creating okay so in this crystals what is important symmetry breaking is important that will actually break the inversion symmetry and it creates distinct valleys at specific points in the momentum space which are marked as uh, k and uh, k prime and this points at this point the photonic uh, band structure exhibits valleys where you know um, optical modes are localized similar to the electron uh, localization in solid state physics so the blue region highlights the projected uh, bulk dispersion and the black you can see the blue region yeah and uh, also the black dashed lines show these ones show the light lines okay and the blue black dotted uh, blue and black dots they show the dispersion of the king states at 
a b and b a interface ok so these are the two interfaces ok and uh, k x denotes the wave vector along the domain wall and what is a a is the periodicity ok so what is important here the valley's uh, topological nature ensures that you know robust edge states along the boundaries of the crystal can be formed so when light travels through these uh, edge states they are highly resistant to back scattering and defects mirroring the unidirectional robust flow that is seen in uh, electronic topological insulators so this uh, configuration makes uh, topological valley topo topological uh, crystals or photonic crystals vpc valley photonic crystals valuable for creating uh, resilient photonic devices that will guide light with minimal loss and interference you can also make um, other kind of structures i will not go into details of it i'll just show you that you can make um, that that's a you know you you can uh, make uh, couplers this is an optical cavity this is a waveguide okay you can also make uh, filters okay so these are different applications uh, possible by the use of topological photonic crystals so what we understood that this topological photonic crystals support very high frequencies something like on the of the order of 300 gigahertz okay so you can actually use topological photonic crystals to revolutionize 6g technologies by enhancing data speed efficiency reliability and also ensuring error free signal propagation by reducing signal loss and latency so topological photonic devices can handle um, high data rates with minimal energy um, aligning with 60 goals for data intensive applications something like virtual reality and ultra high definition streaming or iot so integrating topological photonics can uh, create sustainable scalable networks by reducing the need for power intensive uh, ap amplification and uh, signal processing hardware topological states offer enhanced security for data transmission because of their localized and uh, protected nature which are also critical for future wireless technologies that involves critical data and personal information right so topological photonics addresses the key challenges of the upcoming 6g networks and that is why it is going to be a transformative technology for the future wireless communication so with that now we'll go into the modeling of this photonic crystal slabs and uh, right now i'll show you a video that has been uh, recorded by the ta for the course the Baskar. so he will take you through the console simulation of photonic crystal slab so we'll discuss in details the two examples of rod and slab photonic crystals and we'll see how introducing a line defect will change the band diagram okay so all this simulation will be shown here welcome students uh, to this video on uh, where uh, we shall be uh, discussing how to the simulate the photonic crystal slabs in a console uh, so we have taken basically uh, two examples here the dielectric rods and also the slab hole um, okay so we shall be seeing how to simulate the band diagram of all those uh, two slabs and also we shall uh, see uh, how the defect uh, state actually uh, let me rub it actually here huh so how this uh, defect state uh, by introducing uh, a line defect um, we shall calculate also calculate the band diagram for a defect state here and also we shall see we shall take one frequency from the defect state uh, at a particular value of the wave vector and then we shall see how the wave propagates along the defect so first we shall see uh, this is the uh, square lattice actually because uh, the the center of if you join the center of all the uh, lattices you get uh, the unit cell which is actually a square okay square lattice and for a square lattice we all know that uh, in our in your previous lectures you have seen the for a square lattice 
uh, the brillouin zone is also is also a square and uh, the irreducible brillouin zone is this the triangular area, area. and uh, for this kind of uh, slab structure you can see the unit cell is basically actually a rhombus here okay or also uh, it can be uh, a hexagon okay this uh, so for rhombus lattice or hexagonal lattice the brillouin zone is a hexagon actually okay and this is the irreducible brillouin zone tau mk and here uh, this is the tau xm so this is the uh, band diagram uh, for these dielectric rods and this is the band diagram for the uh, for the, uh, the slab hole actually so for both tm and t mode they have shown here so here for tm mode only we get the band gap here because this is the first mode for the tm mode and the second two and second third second and third mode are meeting here so that is actually creating uh, a band gap here and this one is actually for the first band of the t mode so we don't get it we don't get a gap for the t mode here uh, similarly for this structure we get gap for the t mode okay and for tm mode see the first first band and second band are meeting at this point so we shall be we shall see how these uh, bands actually are calculated so first we shall come here so we shall see the dimensions here first the radius we have taken of the dielectric rods um, as 0.2 into a where a is the lattice constant a we have taken here as 1 micrometer and the dielectric constant we have taken as uh, 12 okay so you know uh, from the earlier lectures uh, that for uh, this is the real space reciprocal lattice okay and uh, for a real space reciprocal lattice, um, reciprocal lattice the uh, translation vectors in the, in the real space given by a1 and a2 okay uh, so a1 is given by a into x cap and a2 is given by a into y cap so correspondingly by using the formula that as you have seen in lecture i think 9 and also in 14 uh, the formula for b1 and b2 if you use uh, then you get b1 as 2 pi by a into x cap and b2 as 2 pi by a into y cap so the reciprocal uh, lattice is also a square lattice like this okay so if you take if you join all the lines uh, from 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 a single lattice to adjacent lattices and, and then you take the perpendicular bisector and you join the midpoint of them so you get this brillouin zone this yellow shaded area so the one eighth of the part region is the irreducible brillouin zone so you can see that the distance between this lattice and this lattice is 2 pi by a so half of this is the your brillouin length of the irreducible brillouin zone that is from tau to x see this one tau to x so this length is your half of the half of b1 that is a pi by a so that's why this length is your pi by a and this uh, along this length is also pi by a okay and for this example here we have taken radius as 0.45 into a a lattice constant same 1 micrometer and dielectric constant as 12 and this calculation for real space lattice and the reciprocal lattice we have shown earlier also in lecture 14 i think uh, we have shown the simulation how this hexagonal brillouin zone simulations are done so we shall not be discussing here in this year in details and uh, so next we shall take this example okay so you can see this uh, b1 and b2 vector here okay uh, so this is the brillouin zone and this is the b1 and b2 vector so gamma is at this origin so it is a zero zero x is uh, uh, the 0 0.5 comma zero and m is 0 0.5 comma 0.5 so how these are coming you can see from these equations so gamma is nothing but the origin so it is zero of b1 plus zero of b2 that's why it is zero zero x is actually we are moving from gamma along the direction of along the length of b1 that's why only half of b1 is coming because x is the midpoint of the b1 okay so that's why uh, the coordinate of x is 0.5 into 0.5 comma 0. now for m you need to you cannot move along the direction from directly go from gamma to m okay you have to move along the vectorial direct vectorial path okay so you move from gamma to x that is half of b1 and then from x to m that is half of b2 that's why uh, your coordinate coming as 0 0.5 comma 0 0.5 and this k goes to 0 1 2 you have, uh, you have seen earlier also in uh, that uh, lecture so these are the uh, scalar uh, quantity designated to each of the high symmetry points where the k vector is given by this alpha b1 plus beta b2 and b1 is nothing but your 2 pi by a into x cap so your first part will come out to be alpha into 2 pi by a into x cap 
Okay, so this is this alpha into 2 pi by a is basically your kx that we shall require it because we shall be using this in console. Okay, and similarly uh, beta into 2 pi by a will be ky. Now how to design this uh, unit cell? So first we shall be drawing a square like this. Uh, let me take another one. Okay, and this one. Uh, and this this is the square actually. We shall be drawing this square. Uh, the distance, the side, of each, uh, the length, uh, length of each, uh, the the side length is given by the lattice constant a. Then we shall be drawing four circles so whose uh, center is the uh, one of the corners of the square. And then we shall be removing the part which is outside this box. So this is so this will be our unit cell. We shall be applying periodic condition then, and then we shall use the conditions for alpha and beta. So how we have calculated this alpha and beta that you know earlier in the previous video, how these are calculated intuitively because from these uh, points, because from tau to uh, gamma to x, we are getting, we are moving from 0, 0 to 0 0.5 comma 0. So accordingly, you have to intuitively calculate the formula for alpha and beta. And then we shall use, we shall be using it in the console. Similarly, for this kind of structure, uh, this is the same formula that we have used in the previous uh, video. You can refer to that how these are calculated uh, from these high symmetry points, how these coordinates are also uh, achieved that you can see. And then next uh, we shall be discussing the defect state, which is the important one because we need to know how these uh, defect states are calculated. So you can see that uh, this is a uh, entire array actually, which is uh, periodic in this direction and also which is periodic in this direction, okay? So, and by uh, normally uh, these lattice points uh, should have been there because due to this repetition, okay? And the distance between them is actually A here, the lattice uh, uh, constant. So there also the distance is A, so there one another lattice point should have been there, but we have actually removed it. So that's why we have created a line of defect because this defect is periodic along a, line which is in the vertical direction vertical line okay so th that's why it is called a line defect if you would have uh, removed only one lattice point here say suppose uh, this is present then uh, this is present then also this is present and say suppose this we have removed this lattice point so that would have been a um, point defect so point defects are actually generally used for confining the electromagnetic mode along in this region only so these are actually basically used as a resonator type of devices in maybe in filter only, IQ filters and other filters. But uh, if you create a line defect, you are creating a waveguide kind of path. So you are giving a path. So along this path, we can actually uh, control the flow of light. Okay. Uh, so by giving a particular frequency and that frequency will only propagate for other frequencies, the light will not be propagated. Okay. So that we'll see. So how these frequencies are coming? So for this kind of uh, structure, we need to calculate the band diagram first. So we shall, uh, so the uh, band diagram will be uh, looking like this. So this, you can see the blue shaded region. This is the surface state, okay? This, this blue shaded region. And this yellow part is the band gap, okay? So earlier for a normal uh, periodic structure, the, there was uh, in the, uh, band gap actually no such kind of line was appearing but here you can see that a red a red line uh, this one a red line is appearing so this is the defect state so or the guided mode okay so due to this introduction of defect this kind of uh, eigen frequency state actually has appeared so this is the defect state so at a particular value of k vector we shall be selecting one frequency and then we shall be simulating this kind of array structure entire array then we shall be applying the wave uh, frequency here that particular frequency and then we shall see how this frequency of wave is propagating along the defect okay and then we shall take one frequency maybe uh, this point or maybe this point below this um, that does not actually come under the defect state and then we shall see how this wave is will scatter along the entire um, array okay this will not propagate so we shall go to console here and first we shall see the band diagram here. Okay, so for this uh, dielectric rod structure, you go to the parameters and then you take um, the define A as one micrometer, R as 0.2. You define the scalar K as 0.1. You can take any, any value. Okay, so you define K0 as 2 pi by A. 
and then you give the conditions for alpha and beta and then kx and ky as you have defined alpha into k0 ky as beta into k0 after defining this you go to geometry and then you uh, set the unit as micrometer and then you build uh, the square shape by giving side length and center as uh, origin so your center is origin here so you build this one select then you create all the four circles to take radius as r and then their center will be each one of the corners so i have taken minus a by two minus a by two this is the first circle so accordingly all four circles i have built and then you go to partition domain because we need to remove this unwanted part outside the box so you select all those four circles and then say select the edges this is the that is the this is this is the partition uh, boundary so you select all the four edges of the square and then you hit build selected and then you go to delete entities then you select domain and then these domains you select and then remove it okay so you get finally get the unit cell structure for material you uh, go to the uh, material part and then add material and then in the building option you select air and then add to component okay don't add go add to global materials add to component only okay then air will come after that you go to uh, this electromagnetic waves okay uh, this one sorry wave equation electric you go down and you see electric displacement field model so you select a refractive index okay and then you go again to air and then in the material contents you give refractive index as one then you right click here and then uh, create a duplicate version of it because we are just selecting the because dielectric is nothing but has got the same uh, properties of with air just the difference in the dielectric constant so you get this and then you change the refractive index to square root of 12 okay so and then you select all those uh, dielectric rods okay as uh, and air is this space after giving this uh, you go to periodic condition you apply to this opposite faces and then flocket periodicity as kx and ky second periodic conditions then you go to mesh you use user control mesh or physics control mesh but the physics control mesh actually does not give that kind of better uh, fine mesh so you go for user control mesh and then you select individually you select the regions and then you um, select the quality of mesh here okay then you go to parametric sweep then you add parameter k and then you sweep it from 0 0.1 to 2.9 because we need to if you see this here so your k vector sweeps from 0 1 2 and then again to gamma that is for k equals to 3 so we don't include 0 and 3 because these are the extreme and discontinuities so we just start from um, 0 0.1 and then 2.9 then eigen frequency you take 10 or maybe less than that then you search for eigen frequencies it is around 1 terahertz then you keep it as larger real part 1 terahertz because uh, uh, if you see the band diagram here yeah, the frequency is in terms of c by a okay so a is your one micrometer that is your 10 to the power minus six and c is your 10 to the power eight so that is your uh, the value of frequency is of the order of 10 to the power 14 that is hundreds of terahertz that's why we are taking uh, we are searching for eigen frequencies in the uh, we are taking typically we take it take it as one terahertz okay and then you click uh, build all then build mesh you click hit compute so you get this kind of band structure so this is for the tm mode okay so tm mode you see first this is this is the first band and second and third band they are meeting so if you go to this structure again see for the tm mode this is the first band okay and then the second and third uh, bands actually they are meeting here okay so this is the tm gap so that's how you calculate the band diagram okay similarly for if you want to calculate for the t mode you just go to electromagnetic waves here and then you just select here in plane vector okay and then you again click build mesh and then compute it will give you the band diagram okay so if we move on to the second uh, example so <clears throat> sorry so if you go here and then this is the exact uh, uh, structure that we have actually uh, designed it earlier also in the in our earlier in lecture 14 uh, itself so i won't be going into details in this geometry here so you define all the parameters here and then after you mm, define the geometry then material and then electromagnetic waves 
uh, you keep uh, out of plane because tm mode and then you select the build mesh and then you after uh, you click compute then you get this kind of band structure so for tm mode you see the first two bands are actually meeting so you go again here see for the tm modes first two bands are meeting so we are not getting any band gap so we are getting band gap for the t mode so again you go to the structure and then you here you change it to in plane vector and then you can get it the same kind of band structure okay so i'm not doing it here because we have already done it uh, in our previous video so so this is the this is how the band structures are calculated uh, this was uh, okay uh, so now we shall be going to the um, how the band structures are calculated for a defect state so you see that uh, this defect is actually uh, periodic in the vertical direction that is in the y direction okay so you take one supercell this is a kind of box where we include a few of the lattices now here not we are not taking only a single lattice we are taking multiple lattices one two three four and then here is a gap so this kind of structure is a is called super cell because this is super unit cell sorry super unit cell because it is a, a super set of the unit cell okay uh, the, because we are uh, this if you check this is one unit cell so we are actually taking uh, number of unit cells here okay and this is the defect so and uh, we shall be uh, and see this defect is periodic in the vertical direction so uh, so uh, this phase of the box and this phase we, we shall apply periodic boundary condition and this opposite phase this phase and this phase will not uh, will apply the uh, pec boundary condition okay so we have already i have already calculated it so you go to parameter and you click a as this r as this <clears throat> and uh, you uh, uh, define the k vector uh, k scalar quantity so along x direction there is no periodicity because the periodicity of the defect is along the vertical direction that's why we have taken kx as 0 ky as k into pi by a why because uh, if you <coughs> sorry if you see it here uh, in the band diagram see uh, this is the normalized unit uh, frequency k into 2 pi by a and last value is 0.5 so if you simply 2 pi multiply 2 pi by a into 0.5 you get pi by a so your extreme lim maximum limit is the pi by a and your uh, lowest limit is the zero so your k is actually spanning from zero to pi by a so the, that is your ky so you accordingly you mention ky as k into pi by a and you sweep k from zero to one okay then you go to geometry and then you first make a rectangle and then first make a circle and then you move uh, uh, you copy uh, or you repeat these circles along this line okay and the distance between these two circles is the lattice point you just make sure that you don't uh, uh, the, this is the displacement a okay and then you delete one circle from here so you get this uh, this is the delete actually uh, if you see uh, see so this is the circle i am deleting here to create the defect so, so that's how you create a super cell super unit cell and then you fill the materials and then again you go to electromagnetic wave equation out of plane then periodic condition in the vertical direction and then pc along these two directions okay then you go to parametric sweep you sweep k vector from 0 to 1 then eigen frequency now it uh, here you see that search is uh, is uh, in one terahertz actually but number of eigen frequencies i have i have increased okay why because uh, you if you see the band diagram so you can see that these are the surface states and these are also the surface states and this is the band gap so there are actually here actually there are uh, quite a lot of number of frequencies are there so that's why uh, if you give only four or five you might not be able to see this defect state okay so you need to give more number of eigen frequencies that will actually uh, increase your computation time but uh, that's how you do it uh, so you can keep it in place of 50 you can keep it 40 but uh, not uh, less than uh, 25 or 30 actually okay so then you click build mesh and then you click uh, compute here so you will get this kind of um, band structure so now you can see that uh, uh, in i think at, at around 85 or 84 maybe this fine black line structure so this is the defect state so from i think 62 to 122 uh, you get a band gap and see this is the fine black line structure this that's exactly which we are uh, which is given here see so this is the band structure here okay that's fine 
red line so here this fine black line here appearing so now you need to see how the uh, for the, for that particular frequency how this wave is actually propagating okay so we shall see here this so now in the book actually they have taken an example for ky is equals to 0.3 into 2 pi by a so that is your 0.6 into pi so that is all for this lecture uh, we will start the discussion of different types of defects in photonic crystal slabs in the next lecture if you have got any query regarding this lecture you can drop an email to this particular email address mentioning MOOC photonic crystals and the lecture number on the subject line thank you Thank you.